What's up everyone, Aaron here back with another video. This time today, I just wanted to go over some basic music theory knowledge, both having to do with rhythm and having to do with notes themselves. And so I'm just gonna go over just kind of some basic building blocks when it comes to music theory knowledge, nothing too in depth. If you don't know music theory, if you don't know rhythm, this video will be for you. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so I'm here inside of my DAW. I'm using Ableton 11. However, if you're using a different DAW, this information still applies all the same. And so the first thing that I want to talk about is rhythm. I feel like rhythm is very crucial, especially when it comes to dance music, but also, I mean, any music, it's really crucial to know. And it's something that I really focus on in my own music. So I wanted to dive into this first. So rhythm, what is rhythm? A rhythm is basically just a musical pattern that just repeats. And so this might be, say, like a house beat, or usually it, it kind of is more so accompanied with drums and things like that, but it can also be applied to notes, chords, things like that as well. As we can see here, there's this grid, and at the top it has uh, numbers one, two, three, four, etc. So these are all bars. So we're going to talk about bars and beats. And so within each of these bars is a certain number of beats. In this particular case, uh, there's going to be four beats because we're in the time signature 4-4. Four, four. So if I zoom in, you can see that there's 1, 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4. Um, and then if I were to go and change this to say 3-4, now there would be three uh, beats within this bar. Another common one is 6. Uh, what is it? 8. So this is another one, and so there'll be six beats inside of a bar, and so on and so forth. All right, so I'm just going to lay down a simple house beat pattern, and so that is probably the best way to kind of demonstrate how uh, these beats work. So right now it's in, let's see, eighth beats. So I'm going to go ahead and just place a kick on the one, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, and now I have a simple house kick pattern. And then I can go ahead and add a clap here on the two and the four. And then if I want to, I can do the hats. I'll do them in eighth notes. And there you go, simple house beat pattern. All right, so now I'm just gonna hit the B key and I'll have a pencil tool so I can go ahead and erase these quickly and then right click and I'll go to 16th notes now. And now I can draw in hats again at 16th notes. And this is more so a common pattern that you might see in like trap music with these faster hi-hats like this. But if I play it, now you have 16th note um, hi-hats. So uh, you could do this with anything, but I definitely see it most commonly used in like hi-hats and things like that. And then, so here the kick is basically, um, you know, quarter notes if I were to extend it and then the claps are basically a half note if you drag it all the way across but just for ease's sake you know we'll just leave it at the length it's at right now by the way if you're liking the video so far please be sure to give the channel a follow and leave a thumbs up on this video all right so we've talked about rhythm in terms of drums but what about when it comes to notes and chords and things like that actual melodic content. So I went ahead and grabbed this uh, chord progression here. This is from Unison's Essential Advanced Chord Progressions. And I just went ahead and just grabbed this first one and dropped it into a piano. So as you can see here, each of these are the length of four beats or a bar. And so the chord will go and change after the four beats, except for these last two here, as you can see, they are half beats each. And so it'll go and change after two beats. So I have the metronome on so that we can hear in context the chords playing against actual time. And so if I go ahead and hit play, you can hear one, two, three, four, change. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the last two here, one, two, three, four. And so, with that, you know, again, you can go and kind of change the length of these to go and create different rhythm with them. But, you know, when you're just doing 
super simple chords like this, typically it will be four beats across like this for each chord. Now, if you want to go a bit more complex, you can go and highlight all of these and just have them say happen every beat. So if I did something like this, now if I hit play, as you can see, it's happening more frequently. There's more rhythm with it. Now I have these simple chords here. Like I said, they're each a bar long, very simple. But if I wanted to, you know, use this as like a musical bed or say like I wanted to put a counter melody on top, then I can just keep this super simple like this. And then I can go ahead and, you know, put in some notes that might be some quarter notes like this, maybe some eighth notes, maybe some 16th notes going down like this. And, you know, I can kind of just draw in uh, various things or even play it in if, you know, you play keyboard, I don't, unfortunately. Um, but I just go and draw everything in like this. Now, I can't hear what's going on. Um, if I want to hear, I just hit this little headphone icon right here and it'll turn blue. And now I can hear all the notes. Probably not in key at all, but just to demonstrate how that might go and kind of interact with each other. Uh, that's one way to go and do it. All right, so I've gone ahead and made a simple melody on top here. And so it has a combination of like quarter notes and eighth notes and things like that. And so now uh, I'll go ahead and just play it just so I can kind of hear the context with this original uh, chord progression that I had earlier. Now, as you can see here, each of these notes landed on certain points of the grid. It's, so it does feel very rigid, but, you know, it's the best way to keep it in time. And so, you know, here, this one's starting on the beat. This is like a, a half beat, but still it's like an eighth note. And, you know, same with this and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So just keeping them on grid like that can definitely help to structure a good rhythm and it will sound really great with whatever chords you have here. All right, so we talked about rhythm and so the next essential part I wanted to talk about are the actual notes or the melodic content, scales, uh, things like that, chords, etc. So let's just go ahead and start with some pretty si simple knowledge. Um, I don't have a keyboard on me, so I'm just gonna be using piano roll inside of Ableton. So essentially when you learn piano, usually you start with the C major scale and you'll start with middle C. Now inside of a DAW, uh, middle C is C3 right here. So as you can see, we have all the uh, C notes because it's kind of, you know, again, this the easiest scale to learn. And so it's basically just all these white keys. And so here there are seven notes. There's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C again. And so that just repeats over and over and over for the C major scale anyways. Now within these seven notes, there uh, are these black keys as well. And so these are kind of like accents, if you will, to these main notes here. There can either be a sharp or a flat depending on if you are ascending or descending so if you're ascending it's a sharp and it'll have this little symbol here which is like a like a number symbol or a pound sign if you will and then the flat it looks like a little lowercase b symbol uh, that will be next to it instead but it's just these exact same notes here so this can either be c sharp or d flat this one here with this, it would be D sharp or E flat because you're going down. Now, why is the C major scale all the white keys? Well, it's based on this formula, which is how we go and kind of determine all the different scales. So it's basically a whole step. So a whole step is where you go and you skip a note onto the next white note. So this is a whole step. If it were to be a half step, it would be from this white note to this black note. That's a half step. So it goes whole step, whole step, half step, and whole step, whole step, whole step, half. So it's basically two whole steps and a half, and then three whole steps and a half. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do another scale. I'm going to do the A major scale. And so I'm just going to go ahead and take a note and I don't want it to play. So I'm just going to drag it over here so that I can see the scale. So that way if I want to go and, you know, see all the notes that are in the scale I'm in, I can just look over here and I can see everything. So I'm going to start with the A. And so it would be a whole step and another whole step. So I'll go from this one to this black key. And then it'll be a half step. So it'll be right here. So whole step, whole step, half step, and then whole step, whole step, whole step, and then half step. And there you go. There's your A major scale. And so now I can go ahead and hit this fold button and I can only see these notes here for the scale. So that way I'm playing notes only within that scale if I want to stay within that. Or if I want to, you know, go outside of the scale, I can just turn the fold off and kind of do whatever I want to. But yeah. All right. So we've learned the major scale, but one other uh, crucial scale to learn is the minor scale. And so this is basically the same, except there's a couple of changes. So it's going to be, we'll just start on uh, middle C again. And so it will be a whole step and then half, and then whole, whole, half. Whole, whole. And there you go. That is the C minor scale now. And so all we're doing is um, in the major scale, these two are right here, but we're just flatting the seventh from a B to a B flat. It says A sharp, but again, when you're going down, it's a flat. And then same with this. We're moving this down to a D, f or sorry, E flat, uh, not an E. And so. That's all you're doing. So it's just essentially a uh, whole half, whole, whole half, whole, whole. And so again, if I were to do it at, let's just start at A. So A and then it'd be whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. And so there you go. There's the A minor scale. All right, so now that we know the two most common scales, we can now use that to start making chords. And so the most common type of chord is a triad. So a triad just consists of three notes. It's usually the one, the third, and the five. And so when you're looking at, uh, say, like a major scale, uh, so this would be the one, if you're doing like a C major scale, uh, and then whole, whole, so th this is two, three, and then four, five. So this would be the G. So basically it would be C, E, and G. And so that would be a C major triad chord. And so uh, now if we were to do a C minor triad chord, basically, you know, if you remember the formula, it is whole half so basically you're just flatting this uh, e here this would be a, an e flat not a d sharp so now this is a c minor triad now we can keep building upon these triads and we can do like major seven major nine etc 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 for a major seven i would just add the seventh note in this scale which is a b so i just throw that in there and so now i have the one three five and seven and so now that is a C major seven chord. And again, if I want to do a minor, I would only just go and flat this. So that is a C minor uh, seventh chord. All right, so just to recap, we went over rhythm and that consisted of the bars and beats that were you know, on the grid, the DAW, and we went over the different note or beat intervals, like quarter notes, whole notes, half notes, things like that. We also went over major and minor scale, as well as just building basic triads and major and minor seven chords. And so I feel it's kind of basically it in terms of good essential knowledge to know when it comes to theory. There's obviously much more advanced stuff and we can get into that in a future video, but just for a good kind of crash course on music theory, I feel like this is a good intro to everything. So if you have any other essential music theory that you feel um, is good to know as well, please drop a comment below. Once again, if you enjoyed today's video, leave a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. We'll have lots more videos coming out. 
if you wanted to go and download the MIDI files that I used today, you can find a link to that free pack in the description below where you can grab these MIDI files and play around with them yourself. All right, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.